Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I'm Ed, the Tactical Plus Size Model, and we are shooting blanks. One of the best parts about this job, being an operator, other than fighting communism wherever it can be, is my ability to introduce you to special people in my life. I may not be rich when it comes to gold. I only have a few thousand pounds of it. But I am rich in friendships. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to someone I've known probably 12 years. 12 or so years? 11. Okay. Now, if the facts aren't that bad, don't don't interrupt because I'm on a roll. And <laughs> this is Lindsay McCall Long. I have I count myself fortunate to be a part of her life. She is probably the most optimistic person I know. The one of the funniest people I know. There are very few people who can make me laugh out loud. This lady not only can make me laugh out loud, she'll do it in front of other people at my expense, and I'm okay with that because she does it with love and a, and a good heart. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You say that now. Let's see what you say about I know, 45 I'm minutes to I'm an scared. hour from now. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> So, Lindsay, I, I, and I'm going to tell you what I think is your story, because I'm a good storyteller, and if I get it wrong, okay. correct me. Born in California. Yes. Raised in Georgia. Yes. A big family. Yes. A happy family. Mm -hmm. A musical family. Yes. What's the musical connection? Uh, my dad was the co-founder and drummer for a 70s funk band called Confunction. See, and I know what that is, and I know that yes. Ben, our engineer, and Abood, our cameraman, know what that is. If you don't know what it is, you need to get on YouTube, yes. and you need to watch, and you need to bounce, and That's you need right. to move. That's right. And my mother actually used to work with my father's group. She actually booked their first big gig, and she worked with them until she. my father wasn't performing anymore, and she's a publisher, songwriter, and she also was the vice president of uh, MC Hammer's management company wow. for a few years also. What label was she with before your dad? Um, I believe they were on Mercury. They were, were I'm Mercury glad you records. didn't say Solar Records because Solar Records, <laughs> in the day, folks, if you're ever going to blackmail me, uh, you'll need to find the, hopefully, well, I'm not going to say that. Solar Records was off the hook, off the chain. They did some of the first music videos. <laughs> um and we had a blast. And I tell you, um, <laughs> See, you Dance a, Electric. You have, a, you have a musical connection, too. That's Do you remember cool. that Dance Electric? So, yeah. With, uh, what was, he was, had been with Prince. I was the white motorcycle policeman. And guess how many white people were in an entire Dance Electric video? And the worst copy of it is available on YouTube. You can see me for about 8.8 8 seconds. I'm going to find it. No, it's not worth your time to watch nope, it because the quality is it. so bad. Nope, got to find it. So, music background. Are you a performer? No. I did so I didn't get any of uh my parents um talents. My mother was a lighting uh major uh at Howard University and she did plays and she could build sets and she can paint. You know, my husband um, excuse me, not my husband. My husband actually I married a man who went to school for art. My husband Jason graduated with an art degree. She has more than one and, husband, that's why we name him. Uh, apparently. Jason. And then um uh, my brother can draw and paint and build uh, websites, and I am good at telling people what to do, apparently, because um, that's... Uh, it's going to make him crazy. You can tap all you want because I think you want to be a drummer. <laughs> no. But, uh, oh, he's, uh, Ben's okay with it. You keep going. I talk with my hands. I'm a big hand talker. And you're not even Italian. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I think you're, you're, you're selling yourself short because you are an incredible storyteller. I'm learning. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, you're an incredible orator incredible speaker, and you have the gift of hospitality mm -hmm. when it comes to people. That's, I have, that's from growing up in Georgia. Oh, and see, if I spent thousands of dollars with Dr. Hal Bargelt in Los Angeles to lose my southern accent, if it comes out in this hour, it's strictly because of our, our southern connection. I get it. I get it, I get excited. when I If I get excited, my southern accent comes out a little bit. I even brought our Waffle House yes. sunglasses yes. today. Southern treat. So you get to Georgia. Mm -hmm. You're in school. Mm -hmm. mm, you're almost done with school, and you decide you're going to do what for a living? Well, uh, I didn't know actually. 
Um, I was in high school, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm all set uh, with school. School's been enough. Um, but I was in ROTC in high school. Which and, branch? Uh, Air Force. Uh, almost, yes. the, almost the military. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Ouch. no, I'm sorry. I'm Ouch. Sorry. So, actually, that's where I learned my public speaking skills. Uh, I was mortified of public speaking. I had stage fright, and uh, Major Cheryl Greer, Greer, who's retired. Shout out. Shout out to Major Cheryl Greer. Yes, she's retired from the Air Force, and now she's retired from uh, the school system. But great woman. She's like a second mom to me, and I guess she saw something in me that I did not, and she had me do a speech at one of our functions, and I was like, hi, so not my thing. And she's like, hi, so get out of my office and go practice this speech. (laughs) So it was like having my mom at school. And so I did the speech, and people told me I did great, and I was like, I don't ever want to do that again, and she made me do every speech until I graduated. Thank you so much, Major. <laughs> I appreciate it. You have no idea how many speaking engagements she's had since then yeah. and how many more to come. Yeah. So I thought I was going to go into the military um, after I graduated from high school, but actually I go in the office to get my paperwork signed by her, and she told me no. Said, oh, I love you even more, Major. She said she wasn't going to sign it. I was like, well, why not? I said, you know, some of my friends are going into the military, most of my friends from ROTC, and she was like, some of them need to go. Okay. Oh, she I says, love this woman. I feel like you are better, you know, cut out for school. And I said, but I kind of don't want to do that. She says, go to school. If you don't like it, come back. I'll sign your paperwork, no problem. And I was like, wow, like I'm not even given a choice here. Because my mom said, you got to either get a job go in the military, or go to college. you got to pick because you're not going to just sit on my couch. (laughs) So um, I end up um, deciding to go to school because I'm a little spoiled, and I'm like, well, what can I do that my mom will still pay my bills? I'll go to college. And your mom is going to hear this. You know that. I know, and she knows this. Um, But um, I get enrolled in school and uh, in Savannah, Georgia, a small school called Armstrong Atlantic State uh, University, but unfortunately, two weeks after I graduated from uh, high school, my dad was shot and killed in oh DeKalb County. God. So needless to say, I did nothing for... And you were how old? 17. Whoa. And uh, my brother was 14, and I did nothing. There's like probably like a four-month window I don't really remember because I, I didn't do anything. So um, I didn't even start college until that January. We were still on quarters then, uh, not semesters, how they are now. So um, I just went. I was just kind of, I don't know, like in autopilot. So I went to school, um, didn't have a successful first year just because all the grief and stuff oh, started to hit me later. Um, but, um, you know, with the help of some, you know, my family, my friends that I was actually just in Savannah with this over the weekend. And you were up late because you were texting me. And I'm like, wait a minute, what time is it in Savannah right now? I have insomnia. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, so I was able to, I was able to get through that. Um, and there's been ups and downs, obviously. It hasn't always been the smoothest ride. But then I get to graduation. I transfer to Georgia State um, in Atlanta. Right? Uh, no, no. Uh, that's UGA. My that's one University attempt at some kind of sports-related thing, and I get no, it no, they're Cougars actually. Coug- oh, oh. Well, yes. I know a little bit about Cougars. Uh, but well, that. I just turned forty, so I might be one. Hey. I don't know. Um, sorry, Jason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I majored in criminal justice not because I wanted to be a police officer. It's because it had the least amount of math classes, and I don't like math. Amen. I, <laughs> so that's how I, that's how I, I chose my major. I still don't get math to this yeah, day. Yeah. So. I did an internship to graduate. I said, well, I figure it's the easiest one to do is where the county that I lived, which was Gwinnett County, Georgia, which is about about 30 miles northeast of the city of Atlanta. And it was a 10-week internship. And I said, this is the dumbest job <laughs> I have ever seen. Like, I, Just the calls that we went on. And I'm like, you're literally babysitting adults all day. But then about the third week, something changed. And then I saw the help component because I I enjoy helping people. I've always been that one that people came to to spill their guts to, even if they knew me or not. And I was like, okay, I I kind of I kind of dig this. You have every right to complain. Yeah. I wish somebody had come and installed a bidet in my house, though. That would oh, be very he's helpful. got one in his house, uh, yeah, right down there. Our cameraman, he's got. <laughs> he's a bidet. like, but you can't use mine. <laughs> oh yeah, look at. <laughs> 